out. And Volka, the floor is yours. Okay, and I have Master Brian here to help as well because he is quite knowledgeable about things sometimes. Yes. More, more um, so that I'm the submissions herald. Yes. So, um, from like a local herald perspective, consulting is not a super difficult task depending on who the client is. And you're not, first of all, what you're not expected to do, you don't have to know anything like you know everything. It is not your job to do all of their research for them. It is not your job to have to find every single scrap of evidence, um, but it is your job to point them in the right direction. So ideally they will have some idea of what they want when they come to you. Um, if they don't, you need to kind of help them be like, okay, well, are you looking for European country? Are you looking for something more Viking-y, more Asian? Um, and if they can't even narrow that down, I don't, they're probably honestly not ready for a consult because it's, it's not your job to make up their mind. If it was, you could say, okay, you're John Smith, congratulations. Um, so at that point, if they don't even know what culture they want or a time period, like one of the two, I would just send them to the heraldry website, heraldry.sca.org. Say, okay, we'll do a little research and come back to me when you narrowed it down because Otherwise, you're going to just kind of be consulting in circles. Like, mm, I don't know, I kind of want, I don't know, I don't like. Um, so once I've narrowed it down, you can get them into a time period. And some people will come, and they'll have a name, they'll be like, I want Jane. Uh, and they don't, they don't care where it's from, which is also easy. Cause, okay, that sounds vaguely English. Like, we'll find the one English resource we need for it and write it down. Or they'll be like, I want to be 14th century England. So there's two different ways to go about this. If they know what they want to sound like, it's a good idea to have kind of a background of like, okay, that's English sounding, that's French sounding, you know, that's clearly from an Asian country versus if they're like, I want to be from Japan, you know, we don't have a lot of Japan experts. So just being able to point them to like, okay, here's a bunch of SCA resources, you know, here's all the websites I use for research. Let's go here and look at them. Um, so like I said, it's not your job to do all of their research. It's not your job to go into those websites and find everything specifically for them. You can kind of, and right now all consultations are digital anyways, because we can't meet in person. Um, so if you are in person and you have books, you can give them some books to kind of look through. Hello. Um, if it is digital and over email, which is how most of mine are, I'll be like, here's three websites, look through these, get back to me with what you like. Or if it's something that they're like, this is the name specifically that I want, if I find it, I'll say, here's the documentation we're using. And usually they don't argue because they're coming with me because they believe that I know about documentation. Um, so once you have the documentation for that, you make sure that you know, all the pieces go together. They have to be within 300 years if they are from different cultures. So if you're going to combine, for example, a Norse name and an English name, they have to be within 300 years of each other. Um, if they're from the same culture, 500 years. Um, usually it's fairly easy. There was a lot of people with a lot of names. So you can find almost anything if you're dedicated and if your client's dedicated versus some people are like, I don't know, I want it to vaguely sound like this, just whatever works. My dog's gonna make more noise. Um, and then, you know, you make sure you run it through the ONA, make sure that it's not too close to anybody else's name. If that's not something you know how to do, you can just send them to the SCA Heraldry unofficial chat on Facebook, and there's about 100 heralds that are happy to conflict check names for you. Um, Armory is a little more difficult because everybody has opinions on graphic design, and they like this color, and they specifically want this thing. Um, and there's really stringent rules about what can and can't conflict. So usually I'll have them pick you know, their top three tinctures or colors, um, you don't want to use a ton of herald jargon because they're coming to you because they don't know about heraldry. They're not coming to you because they're experts. So you don't have to call it or an origin, just call it yellow and white and you fill out the form with the correct heraldic terms. 
Um, I have them pick out three tinctures, usually two colors and a metal or two metals and a color. And then be like, okay, what are the top one or two things you want on there? And then go from there. Ideally, you're trying to keep their armory as simple as possible. A lot of people think that you have to do these big complicated things and all the colors have to be furs and that's not true. Like my armory and I'm in that, join the FCA fairly late in the game has like two things on it. So don't be afraid to push them kind of towards more rare, rarely used charges and there's a list of them online. If they have no idea what they want, I send them to the Traceable Heraldic Art Project. Say, okay, you know, look through here. They've got a section of animals if that's what you want. If you're more of like a, I want a sword on a background kind of person, they have some different weapons you can look through. Um, if you're not an artist, that's fine. Again, the SCA Heraldry unofficial chat, there's a million people there who will mock up their armory right there for them. Um, I also have them go get a conflict check there because I'm just one person. So like I can mess it up super, super easily. And like Brian's super good at his job, but he's just one person. So I think it's better to have a lot of eyes on it, especially because I have a graphic design background, but I don't research armorial heraldry a lot. So like graphically, I can say this looks good versus this looks terrible and I'm not submitting it. Um, and period heraldry typically will follow graphic design rules, but it is a little bit different. And so the people online also can be like, well, you know, that's pretty, but it would be more historically accurate if it looked like this. And if that's something your client likes, then they'll be able to get more opinions on that. Um, so my opinion with heraldry is to get as many eyes on it as possible is good. Um, especially if it's someone who's like, I don't really know, I just want it to look good and I want it versus the people who are like, this is exactly what I want. Um, and if they're super wishy-washy, I'll, I'll, uh, draft up, you know, three, be like, okay, which one of these do you like the best? We'll work off that. Um, so I had a guy who wanted a black ram that was up on its hind legs and he's like, I don't care what else you do, I want the black ram I wanted on red. Um, so you kind of have to steer them with armorial rules. So it, it's important that you know the basics, you know, the color on color rules, metal on metal rules. Uh, you don't have to know everything, but generally keep it simple, understand the colors. So you can say, well, we can't have black on red. I mean, we can do black on red and white. And usually they're fine with that. Um, so once you've done all your research, there's forms on heraldry.osseor.org. You will fill those out. Um, local heralds technically do not have to fill these out for the clients, but if you're going to be a good herald, you should fill them out. Um, and then in the, there's an on Steora heraldry group, and I actually have converted all of the PDFs into words, so word documents, so they're editable. So go get those, fill them out. I send them back to the person who I'm consulting for to say, look at these, make sure all of your info is correct, because there's you know, their address and their full name and all that. Um, they say, yes, it's correct, blah, blah, blah. At that point, you are going to email it into Kingdom. And Brian can talk about, I guess, what they look for when they're reviewing and what mistakes people make, if you would like to. Sure. So it is important that you do fill out the forms as completely as possible with pertinent information. That is one of the biggest things that will cause an administrative return. An administrative return means we're not even going to look at it. It goes away. And the, uh, the worst thing is to have this beautiful armory or this great name that we can't even deal with because somebody screwed up the form. Uh, so please, as, uh, as was said, do not, you're not necessarily filling out the form for the person, but you're double checking the form and making sure everything's filled out before, uh, it gets sent into asterisk, which is the kingdom submissions herald. Uh, and the biggest thing that we see with forms that's a cause for an automatic return for armory is not using the correct shield shape. You have got to use what is on the form. You can't just throw something, throw another image on top of that image. That is a society requirement and they will kick it back immediately if it doesn't fit their format. Cool. And then once it's in, 
assuming that it doesn't immediately get kicked back, it'll go up on Oscar, which is the online system for commentary and response. Um, and if you are wanting to be particularly helpful, you should monitor that. And that's, you know, when all the heralds are able to comment on it and say this conflicts with something or this is not, you know, stylistically appropriate. Um, so at that point, you should monitor those comments so that you can get with the client. And if someone says, you know, these two swords were drawn differently, they need to be drawn the same. Instead of having to have that returned and restart the entire process, you can just go to the client and say, yeah, this needed to be redrawn. Here's what they did. Are you okay with this? And it can just keep going. Um, because the heraldic submissions process is nine months long on a good day. Um, so ideally, what you are trying to do is make everything go through on the first try. You don't want, and like things will get kicked back, it happens. At that point, you can resubmit for free up to two years later, is what I'm told. Um, but I don't like resubmitting because then they're freaked out and how long is this going to take? And I saw a guy get super mad online because the process is taking forever, but it goes through a lot of iterations of being reviewed at Kingdom and then being reviewed at Society and then being reviewed at Society again. And then if it has to go back, you have to start the whole process over. Um, so I think one of the most helpful things you can do beyond getting everything submitted for them is to monitor the comments so that you can avoid starting this nine month process over. Um, and then if you attend Brian's lovely, lovely meetings that happen once a month in which they discuss which items get to be sent on and which ones get to be sent back, um, that's another time that you'll be able to advocate. It's like you need to go to bat for your work. Um, if it's like all my name and stuff was super easily documented, but if it's something that's a bit obscure, uh, I had a friend who wanted the name Ozar and it's a bit, the, the documentation was fine, but it needed to be a little bit justified. So being there to be able to say like, he just wants it to sound like this. He doesn't care, you know, what documentation, so stuff like that. Um, cause a lot of people get confused and they'll just take whatever boxes on the forms that they think need to be ticked so that can go on. So he had ticked a bunch of boxes to be like, yeah, sure. Okay. Send it in. Um, and one of them was like, I specifically want this culture and, and this thing. In reality, what he wanted was that his name sounded like Ozar. He didn't care about anything else. Um, so because I was the meeting, I was able to be like, look, I'm on the phone with him. This is what he wants. Uh, and his name got to go on and got to get passed on society level, and I believe they're still reviewing it because it takes forever. Um, but you need to be able to go to bat for the people whose stuff that you prepare for them versus just, you know, yeeting it out into the world and then saying, good luck, figure it out. Especially because navigating the heraldry sites usually is not super, super easy. Um, it's easy to lose track of the letters. So if you're monitoring it at every stage, it's way easier to keep track of and say, okay, at past kingdom, okay, it's at this part of the society. Um, Cause they're supposed to email, you know, the submitters, but sometimes things get lost in translation, someone typed in their email wrong, stuff like that. So a good herald will monitor those things. Um, and I've even seen people, you know, they get their whole stuff submitted and they're like, oh, just kidding, I wanna change something. So you can just save the herald with the trouble of having to discuss it and say, pull this. They don't want this submitted anymore. Um, so assuming it gets passed on from Kingdom, if it doesn't, you go back to the, now we're gonna research and we're gonna you know, draw this thing. We're gonna get the online heralds to help us design it. If it gets passed on to Kingdom, it goes to society. And that's actually the lengthy part. Like the getting it discussed at Kingdom is only a two or three month activity. Um, so once it goes to society, it gets commented on there. And that's where most people lose track of their stuff. Um, so every person who has come to me and been like, I don't know, I gave my previous herald where they got lost and don't know what happened to it was at society. And it's a lot harder to find it if you let it get out of kingdom and don't know what happened to it. Um, and that they work the same as kingdom, the society Oscar, but it's just bigger. So it's harder to find. So at that point is really just tracking and keeping them updated. Um, saying, okay, it's in commentary, you know, you can expect it to get out of commentary for final review in two months. And it's two months past, you're like, okay. You know, in December, the letter in December, you'll find out if it passes or if it gets sent back. Um, 
And then if you're monitoring it and it gets sent back, you're there immediately to help them restart the process. Uh, I'm trying to keep it really broad because I don't want to give like an entire armory discussion over what colors are acceptable, but if people have specific questions on those things, we can go over it. But like a lot of consulting is that you need to have a basic knowledge of the rules um, for names, for colors. You don't have to know everything. Consulting's not scary. And if you don't know something, it's fine. Just tell them you don't know and like you'll research it and get back to them. Um, Cause the reason they're coming to you is they don't know. So they're not gonna like, well, actually you. Um, so consulting is actually really fun cause then they put their heraldry on everything and you get ideally, um, you get to see it. So some of the bigger mistakes people make are they think that their heraldry has to be their life story. Um, remind your clients, this is not their resume. Just because they're a librarian, they don't have to have 15 books on their armory. They can, if that's what they want, but you don't have to have like a symbol for every part of your life. Um, so for example, my arms have dog, have, have a dog on them. And everyone's like, oh, what does the dog mean? What does it represent? And what does this represent? I'm like, I, I like red and I like dogs. Like, <laughs> I don't know what to tell you. Um, and that's the best way to approach armory is don't get super, super married to something. Don't pass, because otherwise you have to change it and now it's already on everything you own and it's very awkward. Um, so in design, we say it's the KISS principle, keep it simple, stupid. Uh, you want as few of things as possible. As it is, you're only allowed to have like eight different things on your arms. So between your colors and your charges, eight total. So you can have four colors and four charges if that's what you want. Um, Hi, that's changed as of last month. It's now 10. That's amount of registered badges. Did they increase the complexity that you're allowed to have? Oh, complexity, no. Yeah. So I apologize. Yeah, you can have up to 10 registered names and pieces of armory, but the complexity on each of those is eight. Um, and they do this just to keep things from getting too busy. The point of everyone's heraldry is that when you're standing across the field, you can be like, okay, everyone with a blue dog is fighting for our enemies. We have to kill all the people with the blue dog. Um, so it's to identify on the battlefield. So what you really want to aim for when helping them, especially, especially with the pictures, the armory is to make it identifiable. Um, and that's where a lot of people get astray because they're like, I want a dog and a book and a pot because I'm a dog loving librarian who cooks. Like, okay, well, how about just like a book with a dog on it? So let's start there. Um, and again, I have them pick, you know, the three main colors that they want just so they're not trying to work every single heraldic tincture in there. Um, if they don't already know about furs, I generally don't tell them about furs because it, it starts to get really complicated, you know, after that, unless it's someone who like kind of knows what they're doing. They have vague understanding of heraldry. That's when I start throwing in more complicated concepts. Again, these people are not heralds. That's why they came to you for help. So you want to keep everything as basic and as layman terms as possible for them. The other thing you can do, uh, Walka, is if they do want to have something that's the dog and the book and the pot and the cow jumped over the moon, is encourage them to add additional badges. Yeah. So you can that, work. That's uh, what they just increased the allowance from eight to 10. Right. So everyone has one device and then you can have nine badges or those can be, you know, they register to you as a badge and then they're the device for your alternate persona or whatever it is. Um, so I know and, I've heard this before, but can you, can you tell me what the difference is between your device and a badge? Yeah. So your device says, this is me and your badge says, this is mine. So my device goes on me. It goes on, if I carried a shield, it would go on my shield because that is something that I personally, it identifies me, it indicates that I am present um, versus a badge says this thing belongs to me. So if I, in the future, took a student, I could put my badge on them. Uh, 
and be like, okay, that's Valka's student. My dog has a bandana with my badge on it. Like that's Valka's dog. Um, if you have like a cup, have your cup with your badge on it, like that's Valka's cup. Um, a lot of people in the SCA use them interchangeably, but in an ideal world, your device says, this is me. And it's, you know, stuff that you put on your body. Your badge says, this is mine. This is my student. This is my tent. This is my dog. Um, and the badge and the device don't have to be related. Mine are, mine use a lot of the same symbols and colors because I'm really into branding. I like to have a personal brand, but they don't have to be similar at all. One of them could be, you know, the book with the dog and the other one could be the cow jumped over the moon. Um, they don't have to be related at all. And they can have up to 10. So the possibilities are endless. Anybody else have any burning questions? Valka, could I throw a comment in? Sure. Uh, this is something someone told me to help me codify my heraldry. The functional test for heraldry is it is there for someone to identify you at 100 yards. Yeah. That, that, was, that was its purpose. That was what I was talking about earlier when I said, like, it's meant to identify people, like, across the battlefield. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I think I might have missed that since I apologize. The other thing I just want to throw in uh, for the benefit of, I know Beatrix because she was in our class when we were in the boot camp. I know that we're, all of us will throw a lot of links around. All of them are listed in the textbook that we gave you. So um, if you have any questions, you can, and those are all active clickable links, so you can fall back on that. And I'll mute my mic now. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, as a consulting herald, your job is, to direct them to where the information is. You don't have to know everything. Brian knows everything because he's very smart, but us normal- Well, I didn't say it. <laughs> didn't argue with it, but I didn't say it. Yeah. Um, and it, it's totally fine to ask a more experienced Herald for help. I ask him for help all the time. Um, Don Andreas, who's not on social media, I ask him for help all the time. Um, heraldry typically is pretty forgiving of people who need help consulting or need help building something. Heralds are very enthusiastic and they want to help you and they want to help you beyond the, ask, the help that you asked for. So let me ask you this, are you the herald for your area or is someone else and you just kind of help out? I'm just worried. Uh, I'm, I'm interested <laughs> about the dynamics, not worried, interested about the I was, dynamics. I was the Herald for LC for a year, and I recently stepped down to be a deputy to the Star Herald, which who's Mr. Selena, Brian's lovely lady. Mm -hmm. So I am helping her out now. I don't, I know LC had applicants for my position. I don't know if they, if Baron and Baroness found them acceptable, if the Central Regional found them acceptable, but I am no longer in that spot. Uh, it was gotcha. opened up for others, um, but I'm still around the community, helping out Star Principal, and cool. Um, I'm always happy to consult because I like to make pretty pictures. That's my favorite <laughs> part of heraldry. So, well, I know in Namron we had a um, herald that wasn't really like they were more into voice heraldry than the you know consulting, and so they kind of had an arrangement like that. So that's why I was asking. I was just yeah, curious. In, in some areas, the local herald is just a book herald, which is like the research and submissions type thing. Um, and then the Baron and Baroness will have like their own voice heralds on the side that are not the official herald. Um, so that's how Elsie did it for a while was like, I was the local herald and I was just the research girl. Um, and they had their own voice heralds that they would use during court that they knew well and trusted. Um, on the flip side, during that time in Steps, uh, Duncan, who is an excellent herald, was the book herald and the voice herald. Mm -hmm. um, I suggest, hold on. <laughs> I have a noisy dog behind me. It's okay. I suggest if you are planning on doing both of those things in your barony, you have some deputies. So, you know, your deputy can get, get, can get them started. Yes, I will bring Briar to say goodbye to everybody before we leave. Um, so your deputies can start them down the right path. And then if, if you are the more knowledgeable book herald at that point, you can kind of put the finishing polish on it versus you having to do everything and the voice heraldry, you know, and monitor the 20 submissions. Um, so it's a good idea to build up a team. 
for a commute. Yeah, I definitely think that is a good suggestion. Okay, anybody have any other questions or comments or anything they want to throw out there to go along with the class? One thing I will add, if you are consulting on a name, especially get get an Oscar account. It, it I mean, it's, it's a free account. All it takes is approval from uh, usually the principal herald of your kingdom. So for on Stewart, that would be star principal herald. Just sign up with your email. Remember your password, please. It's a pain to have to reset it and everything. But if someone comes to you with a name and you're not sure about it, or you just think this has probably got to be easy, what's the best way to do it? Use Oscar to you type in the name into the search bar and it'll come up with other people who have submitted that name. So the work has already been done for you. Do not reinvent the wheel. Absolutely plagiarize, plagiarize, plagiarize for heraldry, not for, not for documentation as a Laurel, do not plagiarize research. Um, but in heraldry, you can absolutely plagiarize. I'm, I do that left and right. If we have something where somebody submits a name, but the documentation isn't quite there. First step is Oscar. Has somebody else done this simply? Yeah, I love that one. Um, my boyfriend is Count Crepin's student, and so he wanted his surname to be son of Crepin. Crepin picked his name because it was only documented in one place, so other people were less likely to have it. And he told me this to my face. I was like, Crepin, why? But then luckily, Oscar saves all the documentation, so I was able to just go pull the documents he used. Very cool. Anybody else? Comments, questions to throw out to go along with the class? Uh, I have a quick question. Yes, ma'am, so, go ahead. Uh, if you run into somebody that, if you have a, uh, a client that wants something really specific, I'm, I've been trying to work with a client who's saying like, okay, so I want my dog on my heraldry. Now it has to be exactly this kind of dog and it has to have exactly these kinds of spots and all that kind of thing. And I'm trying to persuade her like, no, just register a dog and then you can decorate. No, it has to be my dog. Like, how do you, how do you talk to a person in that context? Like, what, how do you, is, what sorts of arguments and, ta and sort of tax do you take to sort of coax them out of that specific, very specific mindset so that what they get will actually get um, passed? Yeah, my knight is one of those people. He has very specific herons and a very specific looking spear. Um, so what we do when I make them two armories, um, I say, you know, here's the one you put on everything. And that's the one that's her dog with her spots, and whatever else. If it's a red that's not, you know, the heraldic red, it's like burgundy or whatever. I give that one to her and I say, but the only way to get this passed is to submit it looking like this without the artistic detail so fleshed out. Um, so you have to be careful when taking artistic <laughs> My dog just fell off her chair. You have to be careful when uh, taking artistic detail. You don't want to change the blazon, but if it's something that's just like, my white dog needs to have a blue eye. So like, for example, my dog on my heraldry, I register her eyes blue, or I draw her eyes blue because Briar has blue eyes or a blue eye. Um, if it's an artistic detail like that, it's fine because we don't register, you know, are the eyes blue, unless it is an eye that is on the heraldry. But if you just have like a dog on there, you can make the dog's eyes whatever color you want. Um, so last time I did this for a gentleman up north, uh, he had wanted like a dark red and some other colors that were like kind of off, they still technically fell within the realm of like, yes, this is red, this is this color. So I was like, okay, here's, you know, the one with the burgundy, the dark red that you can send to people when they ask for your heraldry, but this is how you need to submit it if you want it to pass. Um, and if they still say no to you at that point, just tell them, okay, I'll submit what you want, but this is your money. And if it doesn't pass, this is your money that's getting wasted. Like ultimately you can just be like, all right, like let's submit it. You know, if this is exactly what you want, 
and you won't change it. We'll just submit it and see if it passes. Um, it's not my eight dollars. Like when I spent my eight, eight bucks, I was like, I don't want this to pass, you know, whatever the Herald tells me. Um, some people are not like that. So I'm like, okay, if you want to do this submission process five times and have somebody other than me tell you, no, that's fine. We can do that. But my advice as the Herald who you came to is here is your digital drawing that you're going to send in. And here is your digital drawing that you have for personal use. Right. Okay. Sometimes thank you so much. It can, it, be helpful. it can be helpful on that one if you have a person who is particular, I don't want to say difficult, but particular, um, let the senior heralds or the submissions heralds know, so that's asterisk and bourgeur, just drop them a note and say, look, I, I tried. Can you please be the bad guy or something along those lines? Um, and I've had to do, I've had to be the bad guy. And I've also had to say, I'm not being the bad guy or I'm done being the bad guy. Now Laurel can be the bad guy or uh, Wreath or Pelican can be the bad guy, the, the society heralds. So it is okay, but please let us know if you do have a difficult consult like that so that we can be prepared to figure out what our answers are going to be of, I don't care if it's exactly what you want. The heralds have to register per their guidelines and that spot on that place doesn't matter. So just communicate upline if you can and do it discreetly. Don't like go post it in the Facebook group, but like send a Facebook private message or send an email. Hi, it's like any other artisan, give them an opportunity to fail. I had someone that wanted uh, a natural, her dog. I consulted uh, just as Valka suggested. And no, she wanted her dog. So, okay, you take a picture, you put it in black and white, you put it on the device submission, and you submit it through the, through the Herald's office. Uh, at Kingdom level, couldn't do anything, had to be forwarded, went up to society level, and when it finally was returned for being too naturalistic, take the large submission saying, okay, this is what I was telling you, this is why it's still being enforced. Now, do you want to try it this way or you want to scrap the entire idea and do something else? Or do you want to appeal it and go through period armorials and find exact depictions of your dog done precisely the way you want to. And we had to do it with, she tried doing it with a hair cutting style with her poodle and had to find three examples of poodle cut in that style. Wow. Yeah, uh, it's it's like any other art. Art, you give people the opportunity to fail and give the people the opportunity to learn. We're a teaching position. Yeah, a lot of people want their dog, and originally that's also what I wanted. I was like, I'm not going to make this my life story, but I really like my dog, so I want to be my dog. Um, but then at some point, you know, your client will either succeed, like Tustic said, or you know, you'll realize. You know, I'll just make it vaguely something that I know is for my dog and it's fine for me. Um, I originally wanted a red wolf because that is what she looks like. Um, but then, you know, I talked to a bunch of players and it's like everyone and their mother has wolves and blah, 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 blah. Um, and at the time I couldn't get a hold of my local herald. So please respond to people when they email you. Even if you're, you know, not the officer and it's not something you have time for, you can be like, ah, uh, like, let them know at least if you heard them, because there's nothing more frustrating than being like, I don't know, like, I know what I want, I just need help, and you can't get help anywhere. Um, if you're busy, that's fine. Just tell them, you know, I'm busy with work, contact me next week and we'll do it. Um, but I got kind of left floating out on my own. Luckily, you know, I had a Brian and I had an Andreas who from a distance, I was able to be like, mm, kind of this. And they were like, no, kind of this. Um, so if you're the local Herald, please be accessible or, you know, talk to the people who, who are looking for help. Um, it's our job to make sure people have good heraldry. So if we're just leaving them out, you know, to float into the world, there's no, you're not doing your job. Another thing that people advise me, because I was another one of those, I want my dog. Well, my dog was going to be pretty complicated. She was a pug at the time. And I'm like, I, 
I don't even know if I could draw this, you know, and they're like, yeah, if you don't think you could draw it on stuff, you probably don't want to get it. Let's make it a little simpler. <laughs> so I ended up just doing the puppy paws because I'm like, okay, those are circles. I can draw those. So that might be something to ask people too, you know, how, how good are you at drawing? Because if you've got this really complicated thing and they're like, oh, well now I can't put it on anything because I can't draw that. <laughs> yeah, that is the reason mine is a plain red background because I was like when I put this on a tunic I don't have to want to make a ver tunic so very Harold much wow thanks so much I appreciate it yeah um generally with dogs when people want their dog it's not much of an issue if they have a pointy ear dog I tell them register a wolf if they have a floppy ear dog, I tell them register a hound. And then, you know, we put the arti artistic detail in. That's when I make them the separate one that's, you know, they put on their wiki page or whatever. You know, we'll put the spot over their eye or whatever it is. Yeah, one of the downsides with dogs specifically is a lot of breeds are not period. So getting a specific dog is going to be really tough. So having categories like that is a good idea. Yeah, period dogs that I know for a fact digital art already exists for are greyhounds and mastiffs. Um, and then wolves, if you have like a husky or a malamute. Um, Talbot. Hmm? Talbot. Yeah. For um, any of your, for any of your charge categories, dog, ship, flower, whatever. The uh, online pictorial dictionary has them broken down by categories and you can usually get a really good idea of what varieties are registrable there. Yeah, and some things are a step from period practice, um, but a lot of people, if they are not heralds, like a lot of us are, they don't really care. So like I have a friend and she wanted the owl with its wings out displayed um, which is technically not period. They only did the eagles like that, really. But you're allowed to have a step from period practice. And to me, something as simple as that doesn't ruin the con continuity of the game versus like just armory that is really ugly and stands out because it's ugly. It's like, it's okay to, to let your clients have something that's a step from period practice. I say let as if you really have a choice. You don't. They're going to get what they want in the end, hopefully. Um, it's okay, like, you know, let them have that bird that is displayed that's not exactly period. It's not lore breaking if this is a video game. Um, just warn them, like, hey, if you're trying to be really period with this, this is not something that would have happened. It's totally fine. You're allowed to have it. Um, nobody other than a herald is going to know, but I'm just letting you know. Um, so one time I had a woman and she, wa she wanted a Norse name. But instead of, the Norse took their surnames from their father, but she wanted to take it from her mother. And I was like, that's completely allowed. It's documentable. I just want to let you know, usually when people took mom's name, it meant they don't know who dad is. So you can take whatever implication you want with that. I was like, no, no person who's not a herald is probably going to know that. But that is what it implies if you do this. And she was fine with it. Um, so just being able to tell them it's totally fine to do that, here's what it implies, and let them make the decision if they still want to do it. Definitely good advice. Anybody else have comments, questions? No? Okay. Well, thank you so much, Balka. I appreciate it, and I definitely learned a lot. <laughs> I hope everybody else did too and enjoyed it. And uh, everybody have a good rest of your evening, and I'll get the video posted tomorrow. Okay. Thank good you very much, Olga. Thanks. Thank you. Thanks Bye. again. Thanks. Bye, Briar. Bye, puppy. <laughs> Aw, bye, sweet puppy. <laughs> bye, buddy.